Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. There's one type of locality boa that I feel is the most underrated boa in the hobby today. Today I'm going to go over the characteristics of these underrated boas and tell you why I feel that they're so underrated. So if you've been following the boa hobby for any length of time, you've surely seen that certain types of boas become more or less popular over time. For example, if we go back 10 or 15 years, there's certain morph boas that were super popular back then, but these days they're just not popular at all. Similarly, there's also different types of locality boas that go in and out of popularity. The poster child for a locality boa that has changed in popularity is the Argentine boa. If we go back about 10 years ago, these animals were not that popular because they're not as brightly colored as some of the other boas like the true red tails. And there were a lot of them available relatively inexpensively and people didn't seem to want them. But in the last decade, they've become super popular. The supply has dried up and the price has skyrocketed. And the Argentine boa is one of the most popular types of locality boas available today. More recently, the same thing has happened with some of the dwarf boas like the Torhumara mountain boas. These animals were not all that popular like five years ago, but the last couple years, they've just gotten much more popular. And so we still have underrated animals in the locality uh, sphere that are still unpopular today, but I think they just definitely deserve more popularity. One of the objectives of the Brian Boas YouTube channel is to share with you guys different types of boas you, that you may not have heard of, especially some of the less popular and less well-known forms because there's certain boas that just aren't very, very popular that I feel deserve a lot more credit. So I'm hoping that this channel can get them the credit that they really do deserve. And so most of you guys have probably figured out by now the type of boa that I feel is the most underrated locality boa is the Pearl Island boa, such as this one, Boa Constrictor or Boa Imperator Sabogue. And so these are a very unique and interesting form of boa constrictor. If we go back to when they were first described a little over a hundred years ago, they were actually in a separate genus, not the genus boa, but the genus Epicrides, along with the rainbow boas, like the Brazilian rainbow boa. They're that distinctive from the rest of the boa constrictor group that they were thought to be a different genus. Uh, fast forward to around 1950, they were reclassified as a subspecies of boa constrictor, boa constrictor, constrictor. And then in the last uh, few years, boa constrictor has been split into three separate species, including boa imperator. So most people would recognize these Pearl Island boas as a subspecies of boa imperator, boa imperator sabogue. Although some people are still calling them boa constrictor sabogue, and it means basically the same thing. So you don't need to dwell on, uh, you know, if someone's right or wrong. But the Pearl Island boas are probably the most diverse type of boa uh, and met for many reasons. One of the main things that you can probably see is that they're a very elongated and quite slender form of boa constrictor. So they're much longer and thinner. They're still quite muscular, but it's a more of a lean muscle uh, compared to the red tails and some other types of boas. And they just have this very elegant body shape. And so these animals are really evolved for life in the trees, which is why they're elongated. They hunt birds and lizards and other animals that live in the trees. They also have a very unique shape to their head. So they have a triangular shaped head, but it's kind of flattened and the nostrils are kind of flared. And then they have really large prominent eyes that are often golden or kind of orangey brown in color, really striking looking eyes. And they have this very graceful appearance with this really nice pearly iridescence. So just a beautiful form of boa constrictor. Uh, they're typically mostly patternless. They have reduced saddles, or in some cases they don't have saddles, and kind of a hypomelanistic uh, appearance with a reduction in the dark pigment. And they have all these really beautiful earthy shades of gold and brown and reds and you know ochre colors. Just a really unique uniquely colored boa. And then one other unique thing about them, as you probably noticed, they're a very active form of boa constrictor. This guy is just not sitting still. Um, they handling them is more like handling a colibrid. They don't, you know, they don't just hang out like most boa constrictors. They're always on the move. 
and they're not really I wouldn't say they're necessarily aggressive they just don't like to sit still so it's a definite behavioral difference in these Pearl Island boas compared to some of the other locality boas this particular animal is an adult male and he is from Vin Russo's bloodline produced by Vin Russo back in 2014 this is a pretty typical size adult male he's about six six and a half feet long and there's really three main bloodlines available in the US uh, hobby the first is the bloodline from Vin Russo I'll show you an animal from one of the other main bloodlines in a minute but being that these guys are from a small island they're likely pretty highly inbred so there's probably not a lot of genetic diversity they're probably pretty homogeneous as far as the genetics and the three bloodlines to my eye look very very similar there's not a lot of uh, diversity in appearance so these guys are pretty easy to tell if they're pure or not just by looking at them I've seen people selling animals that they claim were Pearl Island boas and they're clearly not Pearl Island boas I mean no, an no other boa has a head the same shape as these animals or the body and the coloration it's really quite distinctive in these Pearl Island boas this is an adult female from a different bloodline. This is from the uh, Rich Isle bloodline of the Salmon Boa. And so this female is, I believe, nine years old now. She's had a couple litters in the past. She's a pretty large adult animal. I would say she's probably about seven feet or so. And even though she is as long as some of my larger true red tails, she's not quite as stout or muscular. She just has this very lean muscular body but very strong and because they do move a little bit more they can be a little bit more of a handful to handle but you know they're not aggressive so in addition to Vin Russo and Rich Isles bloodlines there's one third bloodline that comes from a Serpentarium Zoo in Costa Rica and I know that these three uh, bloodlines all have separate origins they were collected separately but they are very similar in appearance and um, you probably really can't tell the difference apart just by looking. You, know, you have to base that on the documentation. Pearl Island boas are relatively new to the reptile hobby. The first ones were collected for the U.S. trade about 20 years ago. And there's, you know, not too many of them available. They've just never really been all that popular. I think part of it is because of some misconceptions why they haven't, you know, reached the next level of popularity like the Argentine boa. And you know some of the misconceptions I've heard somebody was talking about them online on you know, social media the other day claiming that they're a dwarf boa and that's really not the case at all as you can see this is certainly not a dwarf animal as far as her length she's one of my longest boas not quite as beefy as my true red tails but a pretty large animal certainly wouldn't call it a dwarf I think the misconception is because they are an island boa and people have this idea that Island boas like the Craw Key and Hog Island generally are dwarf in size, but it's not the case for the Pearl Island boa. So I should mention that they're from the Pearl Island Archipelago, which is off of the west coast, the Pacific coast of Panama. Unlike most of the other island boas, which come from the Caribbean off of the eastern side of Central America, these are from the Pacific. And the actual island from where these guys originated, the ones in captivity, is not completely known. We don't know exactly which island, but they are thought to come from the Pearl Island Archipelago uh, off of Panama. The second misconception, which I think is limiting their popularity, is that people think that these are aggressive animals and you can't handle them. And that's not really the case. They're no more aggressive than any other type of locality boa. Uh, this particular female, when I first got her, when she was younger, she was a little bit hissy. Um, she never bit me, but she did hiss, so I didn't really handle her very much. But the last few years, she's really calmed down, and you can see she's uh, pretty docile. She's not really that difficult to handle, apart from the fact that she is bigger than most of my boas, and as a Pearl Island boa, she never stop, wants to stop moving. So other than that, they're really not very difficult or aggressive or anything like that. This is a sub-adult holdback Pearl Island boa. This guy is actually three years old, born in 2019, and his parents are the male and female that I just showed you guys. So this animal is doing real well. He's probably about four feet long or so, you know, showing the 
uh, usual restlessness of a Pearl Island bow and not really sitting still. But one of the other misconceptions I wanted to address here is that these guys are not colorful or beautiful boas. And I actually, somebody commented on the uh, different video the other day that they thought Pearl Island boas were drab and dull, which I, I completely don't agree with. So I would say that maybe their colors aren't quite as bright as, you know, like a true red tail or something like that. Uh, but they have a real beautiful appearance that's really unique. So they have this reduction in the dark pigment. So they have this kind of overall golden brown appearance with lots of reddish brown markings. Sometimes they have these tail saddles that are this beautiful shade of reddish brown. They have this really nice iridescence to them, this kind of pearly look, especially in the right light. And some of them even have a kind of a piebald appearance. They have like these white scales on their side. So definitely a unique looking boa. The shape of the head is also quite unique, as I mentioned, and just a really cool looking animal to look at. So these animals overall are pretty simple as far as the husbandry, no more difficult than any other boa. I would say though that because they are more active and they're more uh, arboreal in the wild, that it's good to have a larger than typical enclosure, especially with climbing space, give them some branches and room to move around. Uh, they really like that. As far as uh, feeding them, they are really good feeders. One behavior that they do is that they will actually launch themselves out of the enclosure to try and get the food. So you have to be a little bit careful, feed them with tongs. You don't want to go sticking your hand in the enclosure with a prey item or because it might hit your hand by accident. Um, so don't be caught off guard when you're feeding these animals. They're just really food aggressive. But that's good. I mean, we do want animals that are good feeders. Uh, as far as breeding them, fairly straightforward to breed. I found that they're no more difficult than any other type of boa to breed. And typically you get uh, small litters of large babies. So the litter size is anywhere from like five to a dozen babies. The size of the babies at birth is larger than most other types of boas. It's around similar to the, type, to the size of a baby true red tail. So you get fewer babies, but they're bigger in size. The babies generally will feed spontaneously on live fuzzy mice. I do find that in every litter, I might have one or two animals that doesn't feed at first. And typically I'll use assist feeding and typically they'll start feeding on their own after about a month to two months of the assist feeding a mouse tail. Overall, they're definitely a pretty simple and straightforward boa to keep, and they have many unique characteristics not seen in other boas. So if you're looking for an animal to add some diversity to your locality boa collection, you can't go wrong with a Pearl Island boa. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you an appreciation of the Pearl Island boa if you're not familiar with these animals. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.